said a bad guy. Yeah, chico. Yeah, chico. You talking to the bad guy. Tooth picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Something happened to me. Something happened to you, okay? What's going on, everybody? This is Smackin' World. We got a very, very special guest, a trailblazer, man, Mr. Jerry Jenkins, man. He's, he's a native of Gulfport, Mississippi. Mr. Jerry, how you doing today? Okay, great. Good to be great. back, you know, down yeah. on, the, on the coast. Yeah. Yes, and home also. Yes, sir. So, yes, that's a, that's a, that's a good, a good good feeling to come back and see everybody. Yeah, I'm glad to have you, man. I've been speaking with you. He, he, he uh, Mr. Jerry lives in uh, London. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's London. London. It's London. He lives yeah. in London. He lives out the state, so yeah, he's living a good life, man. I, ain't, I, I hope I get... Uh, a chance to visit him one day out there in London so he can show him around the city. Well, well look, I tell you, it's a small world these days, yeah. so it's getting closer and closer, and that water's coming, you know, across that pond. It's, you know, I got it, you. can get there. Y'all yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. happy to see you there. I mean, I sure would love, to, love to bring my family over there. But Mr. Jerry, man, Jenkins, man, we're going to give you your roses here, man. We, I mentioned you was a trailblazer, man. Played at Gulfport High School, man, was one of the first All-Americans. No, I'm not going to say one of the first. You were the first All-American at Gulfport High School uh just tell us about when y'all uh you know your 69 70 state championship year with, with burt jenkins uh, okay. coach burt jenkins i mean uh, tell, kind of tell us uh, right. give us, take us back yeah. man okay now that was the story i was six, the 69 and 70 because no one expected us to do anything because the year before that's when most of the seniors was graduating and they played a lot mm -hmm. we only had like two seniors on the team the rest of them was uh juniors right and we just played, played, played together, and uh, we always got that lucky bounce. Yeah. And yes, and but we had, we was tough as a team, you know. Oh, okay. So we yep, but yeah, we did it, 43 and one. No one would believe. I wouldn't wouldn't believe that right now. Still don't believe it. But. Man, y'all played so many games back then. You know, kids uh, normally play maybe 31 to 35 games, but back then, I don't think it was really that many restrictions that you could play. Uh, you could play 40 or more games. I just remember looking up and seeing your uh, picture up there at B. Frank Brown back in the day, man, and saying, man, those guys were really great, man. And so just to have you in the presence, man, I really appreciate you just coming and taking the time, man, because you're really like a walking monument, man. I don't want you to feel older, but it's just, it's just respect, man. You're like a walking historian, and then I can touch and talk to you, and you can tell me about, you know, playing playing ball in, in, in the late 60s and early 70s. Right. Yeah, it was an, a very a good experience when you're thinking about going to a university, especially a predominant white university, right? right? right. So, you know, it just, I was, uh, was, uh, well organized and mm -hmm. you know to, to be prepared to go there right, and stuff. Right. But uh, I tell you the story about now we uh, we used to we used to have team meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And every time we had my, uh, Gary Morton, and he was like the the joke on this. We always were scared when he was around, right? Okay. But we, I mean, but he was so hard of a player that we followed him. And and that year we won it. In my my senior year, it just took off. Basketball took off of me. Okay. It was uh, it was just unheard of because of it. Got to get to Coach Jenkins. Right. He was the one that does it. Made me like this. Okay. But uh, but I practice and practice, and I keep telling kids, all you gotta do is practice and practice and practice. Yes, and I mean, and and the world, you never know. You don't know what the world is offering you then. You know. So uh, you know that part. But my uh, back to my senior year, it was unheard of. You know, like I uh, I averaged 30, 20, and about eight, and it was like. Uh, on, you know, it is I didn't even know. like in I that didn't era. Know. Right, 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 right. In that era, you know, it was, you know, you wasn't hearing that, and then that's why I said that that performance led to you being the first All American at Gulfport High School, man. So that's why I say you're a trailblazer, man. And you opened up the doors for so many great athletes, just not alone at Gulfport High School, just all over the state of Mississippi, because mm -hmm. that performance, you know, uh, it ended up leading you to signing the first, you being the first black athlete to sign a basketball scholarship with Mississippi State so well that yeah. just show that just show you how great and how big of an impact you had you 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 a humble guy I know that just having conversations away from the camera but right I want to tell you I appreciate everything you did for us because I wouldn't have had an opportunity to play at a you know a division one school and I had offers from division one school coming out of high school so that would have never happened if people like you 
set that trend and trailblaze. So we really appreciate you, man. We love you for that. Right. I thank thank you all for you know remind, reminding me you know about right. these things because like uh, life is going went so fast for me and happened so fast. Right. And I was out there really, really by myself because I didn't have no guidance, no mentor, nothing. Right. I just you know I just went and played the game. I got you. And then it just went from there to there to there. And uh, like I say. You know, if you if you put in the effort, you know, you never know. You right. never know. And I, this is a quick question I want to ask you. You you played in the civil rights mo uh, movement around that time. Did that kind of like basketball kind of get your mind off what was going on? Is you know, it was a, it was a different climate then. Still kind of happens now, but it was much you know worse in the '60s and '70s. So kind of give us. Uh, your mindset on playing basketball to kind of get away from you know, what, what was going on in the world. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's the problem is that once the basketball was over, I went back to my home, my my playground and stuff like that. And got some point, right? Yes, and it was always like that. I mean, we played basketball, but we went our own way. So I was around all the blacks a lot of time, right. you know, but then, but the basketball was one part of my life and then it was the, the living part, the, you yes, know. Sir. And so, you know, it had both, I had both sides of the world. I saw both sides. Gotcha. I saw the, you know, I saw how the blacks was treated and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, but it's some things you wouldn't believe. I was, uh, we was in the state. And we was in Jackson at a hotel, and the first dog, uh, first, just it, it, had, it had to be five out on, in a, a room, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I had to get the bunk bed because it was too white, so right, too right. white, right. cool with me. Right. So this this black maid came in, and you know, to, to clean the room, we were still in bed, and she touched me and said, "Man, oh, you better get out of here. What you doing in here? What you doing here? Yeah. Stuff like that." And I yeah. said, "Well, you know," I said. I said, if this really happens to me, like yeah. black, I mean, that uh, you can't, uh, especially in Jackson, uh -huh. I said, if you can't, uh, just, I mean, people don't live together, black and white, it's not mixed together, you know, in a, in a hotel. But it was true, though. Yeah, and that, was, and that was just three hours away from Gulfport when you said, you mentioned y'all was in the state championship. But, you know, I'm, I'm just glad you shared, that, shared us with us. So let's, let's roll into, you know, you signed your scholarship, freshman year. Normally, back then, freshmen couldn't play. So let's kind of talk about, the, the, your, your golden years at Mississippi State being all SEC, all American there as well. Kind of shares, share on your journey with well, that. Well, hey, it's, 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 I'm lucky, it's lucky that I finished there because, uh, you know, when, especially when you go there, come, coming from Gulfport mm -hmm. on the coast, we're more liberal than, you know, other parts of the states. Right. And we came in there, and, you know, freshmen at that time had to do what the seniors do. And that was cool, you know, we, we, you know, we'll clean the shoes and everything, or, you know, run and get them something. That was okay, but if that belt line, you know, that, I wasn't for that. I wasn't for the belt line. And I went through it once at that time, and the people who hit me, you know, I, I was taking that job the next year, and they're going to be seniors, so they knew that. Right. And then uh, also, you know, they, some of them, because they just wanted to hit blacks, you know, flip blacks. So after that, I told the coach, I said, Coach, I can't stay here. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. I packed my bags, called my mama and told her, I said, look, I'm coming home. She said, what's wrong? I said, man, these white people are beating me, yeah. you know, like that. Right. She said, come on. And then when I called, when it calmed down, the coach came and we talked about it and I went back and then it was, everything was good. Everything was good from then on. And then it was just playing basketball. Again. So, so, going to school. so you definitely went through some obstacles, man. That's again, we gotta thank you for that because you know, you just opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. Uh, even though you had, you know, some difficult times, it was a different climate back then and, uh, in Starkville. So, uh, thank you again, Mr. Jerry. As uh, far as uh, how many points, how many points, junior, senior year was your big year. Just right. me doing my research. Right. I think he was averaging like 22 points a game. Like, can you kind of give us the feeling when you, when you realize – Man, I, I really can do this. I really can oh, do it good. Oh, oh yeah, because I mean, it was a competition too. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a competition, and you know, and but because you had all these guys, you know, because Mississippi State in basketball, you know, it was way down there in the list, right? Okay. And you know, we didn't get no respect. So you know, when I used to like to try to bust the bad, the butt every time I get on the court and right. stuff. So, but right. you still didn't get that respect because you didn't win. You know, winning is a winning is another thing. You got to yeah. be able to win things these days. Yeah. So, so Mr. Jenkins, I want to ask you like. I should have asked you earlier, but at your high school, you seen you your high school, Mississippi State eventually, who you signed with. Who were some other college and universities that you had the opportunity, to, you know, to play for? Uh, my second choice would have probably been South Alabama oh, because wow. uh, they were uh, they they it was close to home, okay. and they had this big arena that you can play in, and the coach was down to earth. 
but it's just you know it's that that conference, that SEC conference. You know that's uh, that's the main. You know, if you yeah. get in SEC, you made in some way right, right, it's, right. because it's a tough conference. Right. And so that was it. But South Alabama, and then Houston also. Uh, you know, okay. when Lewis was there coaching, uh, I, you know, I had that would have been my third choice. But uh, but then after that, you know, I, I I didn't choose a lot of them because. Man, at them times, I mean, I was traveling every weekend when we didn't play, and I wasn't that type of guy to just be going to places and stuff, especially when I didn't know. But my mother told me, say, if, if, if you go to this school to somebody else, another school to ask you, you got to go to that school too. You can't fake no favoritism. Right, I, said, right. I said, okay, that's not a problem. So then uh, when I went to Southeastern, and I was, you know, it's way in the country, you know. Uh -huh. But I said, no, I no said, indeed. no <laughs> indeed. I said, this is it. I said, I'm a sign now. I don't want to go no more places right. like this. Right. And so, right. so you know, that's that, that's what how it started. Okay, man, that's awesome. So, uh, your Mississippi State career was, I mean, you were part of. The, you was uh, selected as an All Century team after you played. Uh, so you were definitely one of the legends in Mississippi State at Starkville. So your career is, is winding down, as far as co collegiately. Now you get the opportunity to sign a, uh, a, a contract with New Orleans Jazz, man. Uh, a lot of people may not know that. So kind of give us a, a, a okay feeling how that was when you signed that first NBA contract. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that was, a, that, was a, that was hard work because, you know, uh, like I say, everything was happening. And then I signed with this, this agent, and he was, uh, you know, he's a talker. Mm -hmm. And then somebody messed over me, he told me this and told me that. And so then he had a bad name, so I was associated with him. Him. And so that that made it hard, okay. and so I had to start from scratch as a free agent. And uh, after the camps, had a good camp, so they signed me, and I went through everything and to, to the exhibition. And at that time, like I say, it was only like 12, 12 players on the team, and eight of them had no cut contract. And Pistol Pete had his contract no matter what. Yeah. So so it was hard at that time. But hey, I got the experience. And it led to my career in Europe. Yeah, so so you are a one percenter. I always want you to get that out there. It maybe didn't finish in NBA, but but you did go to Europe. Can you kind of elaborate on that career as far as? Uh, now that's that, now that's an experience there. Yeah. Because I started out in Greece. Okay. And uh, and in Greece at that time you can only play in Europe, balling on the European teams. Okay. And so I got to travel all over Europe. And even though we'll stay, we'll go a day early, so you got like three or days. And I've been to places like Poland, you know, stuff that you never heard of. And you've been to other places like France, Paris and all that, yeah. Italy. So you know, I, was, I got to play with the best, the best ball yeah. when I first got there. And I played three years there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went to Turkey. And I played in the league there, you know, and the Europe. Okay. And that, that was a good experience, the Turks, yeah. you know. The Turks are just like the Greeks to me, you know, okay. they don't, don't like each other. Yeah. And after that, uh, it started, uh, it started, I started winding down, because I seen everything. And then on my way back to the States, I stopped in England. Okay. And I met a friend that I met in the, the summer before, and he had, you know, we started talking. He said, when did you try out with this team? You know, and it was a second division team. I said, okay, I didn't have nothing to do. Yeah. We made it and we went up. Okay. And then that started another chapter, oh, you man. know, playing that because I played in, in in England for let's see, about seventeen years. Oh wow! You're about seventeen years with the coaching and everything. It's about seventeen years. Wow! You know, so that that was a great experience, you know, the, 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 being established and playing the league, seeing how it grows and stuff, uh -huh. and uh, it, it, it paid off too because you saw, man, I always been the first in something. Like I was the first to sign, to, to be the first. To, to score 5,000 points, you see, something like that. And wow. so it's always the first thing, and you know, that, and so I appreciate it. So that's the, that's the, that's one thing I can look back and say, man, I was always the first in a lot of That's why I say the trailblazer, Mr. Jerry Jenkins, you a trailblazer, man. Uh, straight from Gaston Point, straight from Goodport, man, West Side, is, is my friend's college over there. Um, man, it's so, man, it's just so amazing that you, the basketball, man, you took advantage, you didn't let basketball use you, it let you, Go all over the world, and you got to enjoy life and oh, yeah. enjoy enjoy the world, man. That's awesome, man. I really, really yeah. appreciate you just telling me your journey. Right. So, so now, man, what, what did you what did you do after basketball? Okay, well, I coached a little. I coached okay. in, in England for two or three years. Okay, and then I went to Greece and coached four years there, and then after that, again, I got decided to come back home for a little while, and I started my own basketball school here, oh, wow. and it started in North Gulfport. I okay. went to all the 
county schools, and I had a, a basketball camp for like, uh, I ran it for the whole summer, uh -huh. you know? And then I wore, and then that's when I started getting other opportunities. I had to go coach yeah. with Dale Brown from Kentucky. Uh -huh. I went to coach with him for like three years, four years. Uh -huh. So it was like, you know, it like it started like that. And then when Katrina hit, it slowed everything down, so I went back to Europe. I got you. And so I mean, I'm still in Europe, and I just do motivation speeches now and basketball camps. Oh man, so you're a motivational speaker, former basketball coach, former basketball All-American, you did it all at every level. Man, I really appreciate you just coming on the show, Mr. Jenkins, man. Uh, anytime you ever come back in the States, you know you're more than welcome to come talk to us about anything, whatever, man. You, you, you got my number, you got my got my contact. Just please, uh, man, just keep, hey, keep, keep in contact I, with I, me. You don't have to worry about that because, you know, my heart and soul is always the coach. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm from here. You yes, know, I've, I've seen a lot of people, you know, now they called in the hood. I said, man, I was here in the neighborhood. That's yeah. how we looked at it, yeah. the neighborhood yes, sir. and stuff. So yeah, that part is good. And I, I'm always being in the community. I like to do, I like to see people being successful and you know, things like that, especially in the community that you know and you can, you know, you can say, well, I'm part of that. Yes, sir. You know, being part of something that's good. Yes, sir. You know, you can't beat it. Yes, sir, man. Mr. Jenkins, man, I really appreciate you, man. Everybody, man, this is a legend, man. I got the opportunity to just talk to him and just talk on Smack em World, man. We appreciate you, man. I hope you enjoy your time in the States, man, while you're here. And uh, just just keep being great like you are. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate right it, man. All right, yeah. Another special edition with Smack em World, man. A great Jerry Jenkins, the trailblazer. Right. See you later. Okay. Hey, Chico. Something said a bad guy. Hey, Chico. Yeah, Chico. It's something said a bad guy. Tooth picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Something happened to me, something happened to you, okay?